Good morning and welcome to our worship for this seventh Sunday of Easter, which in the church's calendar is sandwiched rather awkwardly between Ascension Day last Thursday and Pentecost next week. Jesus is ascended and glorified in heaven, but his disciples are still waiting for the Holy Spirit to come to guide and strengthen them in their work. It is in the life of the church a moment of suspended animation perhaps not that unfamiliar to us at the moment. In this morning's service, our readers are Eleanor and Victoria Thomas and Tim Purchase, and our prayers will be led by Caroline Tickley. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praise and glory for ever, as your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation. Pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The response to the psalm is, Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. There is the sea spread far and wide, with its living things, too many to number, creatures both small and great. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hands, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are troubled. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in, your, in his works. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place amongst you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power, for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them. And know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Four years ago, I bought the summer house in which I filmed the beginning of this service. I know it was four years ago because I bought it when my wife and I celebrated our silver wedding anniversary. You may well think that acquiring a man shed is rather an odd way to celebrate a wedding anniversary, but perhaps the personal space it sometimes provides could be seen as a way of securing another 25 years of marriage. Not for nothing is there a sign on it which reads, Grumpy's Shed. In the middle of last week, the rather large rowan tree which stood next to it succumbed to the strong winds, and a fairly substantial bough of the tree split off, almost covering the summer house roof. And when the tree surgeon arrived to inspect the damage, it became clear that the tree was in fact rotten down the length of the main trunk and had to be removed. The summer house itself was evidently made of sterner stuff. Thank you, Wilton House Garden Centre. It is entirely unscathed, but now transformed. It's very much lighter in there. From outside, it looks far more symmetrical and prominent. And the beech head, which had been overshadowed by the tree, now stands out in fresh green relief. And why am I telling you all this? Simply as an illustration of the thought that, sometimes, the familiar has to be taken away in order for us to recognise the beauty and the potential that are being set before us. In this short season of Ascension Tide, I think that same thought applies to Jesus' disciples, who only truly see the way ahead when Jesus has left the scene. They had been through a lot at this point, reacting in horror to the pain and loss of Good Friday, in shock and disbelief at Christ's rising from the tomb, and marvelling at his later appearances to them. Then, perhaps, they begin to get used to having him around again, almost as if they're finally back to normal. 
and, just as they've readjusted to his being with them, explaining everything for them, he ups and leaves them, this time for good, telling them to wait for another, for the Holy Spirit, who will guide them into all truth. And it's then, in the power of the Spirit who comes at Pentecost, that they really begin the work for which Christ had called them. That's the reason that Pentecost, Whit Sunday, is sometimes known as the birthday of the church, the day it all really took off. And I want to suggest that this Ascension Tide, we also find ourselves in that in-between state. We're only too aware of what we've missed over Easter. Our hearts and minds are more than ready to adjust again to the familiarity of our normal lives. And yet we too anticipate the coming of God's Spirit to us at Pentecost, which we'll celebrate next Sunday. Shouldn't we then, like the disciples, be looking firmly forwards and not back over our shoulders? Can we then begin to accept these weeks of lockdown not as lost weeks, a period of bleak absence of all that we crave, but as a period of formation, preparing us for what lies ahead. As the disciples sat again at the feet of their master and learned from him how they must go on, perhaps we can now draw near to him, so that when we are able to worship together again, it will be with our eyes wide open to the needs and blessings of God's world, and with a readiness to receive all that the Spirit may reveal to us about how we will be the church again in the world that emerges after this pandemic has eased its grip. Just as the removal of that poor rowan tree has bathed our summer house with more sunlight and revealed the vibrant growth that has been hidden under its shade, perhaps the experience of living without the familiar can help us see more clearly what needs to be done in order to proclaim the gospel afresh in our generation and in our communities. Perhaps there are other things that seem to have been with us forever, but which will now need to be removed in order to let the light of God's goodness be seen, in order to give us the time and energy to minister more fruitfully. Perhaps it's not for us to write the script of what comes next so much as to find our place within the play that is already being enacted around us, to wait for the things that will be revealed to us, and to be ready to act in faith. It can't have been easy for the disciples to accept that Jesus was gone, and that they must forge a new way forward. It may not be easy for us to accept that the things we find ourselves doing in a few months' time may look rather different from the things we busied ourselves with a few months ago. But the disciples did not make their way alone, and neither will we. It was in the power of the Spirit that Christ's Church was formed, and it's in the power of the Spirit that we can hope to be faithful to our calling today. Like them, we must wait and see, wait in joyful expectation of all that will be. The first letter of Peter, from which we heard our first reading, was addressed to a church under persecution, two individual Christians who struggled with greater obstacles than we now face. Surely we can accept that same assurance that is given to them, that the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish us. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your church throughout the world in this time of the pandemic. We pray for our Archbishop Justin and our bishops Nicholas, Karen and Andrew. We give thanks for all the ways in which we can continue to worship and serve you, even though our churches are shut. Here in Wilton and Netherhampton, we thank you for the opportunities we have had to reach out to new people and old friends through our virtual services and daily prayers online, through our telephone ministry and through our involvement in the local community. We pray that we can continue to broaden our connections in future days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen, the Prime Minister and his Cabinet, and leaders across the world. We pray for those in the scientific community who are advising the government and those conducting research, including staff at Port and Down. We pray for Salisbury District Hospital and all who work there, including those living in our parish. And we give thanks for the work of our local doctor's surgeries and pharmacy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our thanks and praise for your creation, for our chalk rivers and streams, and the wildlife they attract, for trees and plants in bloom, for our woods and fields, and for the knowledge that Christianity has been a strong presence in this place since Saxon times. We pray for the livelihoods of all the people in our parish, remembering particularly those who are anxious at this time. We pray for business owners and all those who work for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you Mr Bowes and his staff at Wilton Church of England Primary School, giving thanks for their hard work and commitment. We pray particularly for the preparations for the reopening of the school building and we remember the governors in their role as overseers. We pray for all the pupils, for their health and welfare and for their learning and development during these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember these words from the first letter of Peter. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. In a moment of quiet, we pray for those known to us who are sick in body or mind. And in this parish, we remember particularly John Hardy and his family. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith and those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray for those who have died recently in our community, including Martin Coombs. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation that among the changes and chances of this mortal life we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find your forgiveness and your peace, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you for joining in today's worship and I hope you will come back next week for the Feast of Pentecost. Until then, let us remember that Christ prayed to the Father for his friends, that he would protect them, that they might be one. Can we, during this week, think through the people in our churches, the people we know around us, and pray for each of them in turn, that the Father will protect them, and that we may all know ourselves to be one in Christ Jesus. And now, before we go our separate ways, let us pray for God's blessing on each other in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.